Hey, what is up guys? So I'm back for the first round of our Battle of the Plains Return to Ravnica deck, or Ravnica deck. Um, and this hand seems good. We've got uh, kind of a removal spell and a bunch of ramp, so we're going to keep. And we have every colour of mana between the ghoul and pretty much everything we could need. So Our opponent leads off of a mountain. Hopefully our opponent isn't too aggressive deck because I think that's where we're going to lose the easiest just because we uh, we have a very good late game but early game we're not very well suited alright it's going to lead off of a signet that's good for us and I think we're just going to also play a signet and pass Oh, oh, great, Pack Rat. So if you're not familiar with Pack Rat, Pack Rat is one of the best limited cards of all time. And I genuinely mean that. It's like, so you pay two mana for a 1-1, one, one, and then you pay three mana to discard a card, and you get another Pack Rat. And the Pack Rat's power and toughness is equal to the, power, the amount of Pack Rats you have. So basically every card in your deck is now a Pack Rat. This card is absolutely absurd. Um, and if we don't draw something to answer that, we're probably just going to lose to it, because the card is just that good. And our opponent played another creature. Okay, sure. The fact that they didn't just keep that card to discard um, makes me think that maybe they're not using the pack rat as it should be used. So we've got four mana to play with. I think we just want to play one of these. One, two, three, four, five, and then next we'd have six. So we might as well just, yeah. So we're just going to try and get this Hellkite out as quickly as possible and try and race our opponent. Hopefully they can't answer the Hellkite, but um, if they just go all in on the pack route, then we really are going to struggle to win. Because they can attack with the pack route, and if we don't, if we block, they just discard a card and it becomes a 2-2. So we just have to take this. And we're just going to hope we can race our opponent. And the reason I chose to play this over the clue stone was because this has summoning sickness, whereas the clue stone doesn't. So this can effectively cost two mana if you use it straight away, and this costs three mana because you can't use it straight away. And there we go; they're going to make another pack rat, and they're probably just going to do this for the rest of the game. I chose to play a card. Okay. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six mana. We can just play a seven six. Or we can play the Clue Stone and then try and get the Hellkite out next turn. I think we just want to get the Hellkite out. And we'll play the throw as we can. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, next turn we can play the Hellkite. And hopefully the Hellkite can just win the game. If they don't have removal, then the Hellkite is just going to be too quick for the pack right, I think. But again, we just can't block because the pack rats will become 3-3s three this turn. Opponent's just going to sacrifice the Terrarian to draw a card and get double black. So now that, between that and this, they have triple black. If you've ever played against Pack Rat, and even in Cube, this card is very powerful. But in in like actual limited environments where it's not like the best cards in ever printed, this card is just insane. I think when you first read the card, it doesn't look very powerful. But when you actually see like see it in play, this is just like pretty good. Unfortunately, we just have to take this. So next turn they can discard another card. 
and then these will be four fours and then we can only block two so yeah we should still be fine but I think actually what we have to play is the worm here one two three four five six Actually, no, we do want to play the Hellkite. And we're probably going to have to tap that as well, I think. Yeah. So this this basically just means that next turn we can attack with the Hellkite and get a 6-6 blocker. So from now on, we always have at least one 6-6. So now if they want to next turn discard a creature or discard a card for Pack Rat, as long as they don't have another Black Source, then we can just block one, take four, eight. What have they got? Yeah, I'm just gonna make another pack route, sure. So we don't get a choice here, we're gonna have to block a pack route. And, oh, we are just dead. Okay, I worked that out poorly. Alright. Yep, there's just game. Alright, on to the next one. So we should have actually played the worm that turn. Because we would have been on... We would have had one extra life and we also would have had an extra blocker. So because we're against pack rats, we just need absolutely any sort of removal we can get our hands on. Um, pyro... Pyromatics is good. going to have to be good enough. We might just want the good blocker as well. I'm not sure. And then what do we want to cut? I'm just going to cut the judgment. Six mana removal is just too much, I think. I'd rather just have the early game that we have. And yes, we do want to play first. Well, we'll keep this. We can cast our spells. Let me do a swamp. And pass. Probably should actually pay the guild gate there. I don't think it's going to matter too much unless we draw a 2-drop. Alright, yeah. Let's play the guild gate and pass back. Next time we can get the ghoul. And hopefully start... If we can draw a forest, then we can play the snake, or on turn 4 we can play this creature. And then we can really start getting the ball rolling, but until then, probably just going to have to use uh, Wrecking Ball. So our opponent's just using this to fix their mana. Or double red? Okay, Tin Street Hooligan. So Tin Street Hooligan is a 2 mana, 2 1, and if you page green when you cast it, you can just run out of fact. I really like that card in Modern, but it's not great. If our opponent is struggling for land, then I would be tempted to just Wrecking Ball one, but I've played a Forest now. Uh, that's really good. So, this is like a really... Really good card. It says when end spell field deal through damage to target creature apply and in China creature has first strike. So now they have a, they have a two one first strike and they've just killed our mana dock. So I think this time we're just gonna have to wrecking ball this. The other option was to play the guild gate and then next time play the blood baron, but the Maybe that was better, I don't know. It's too late now anyway, so let's just go ahead and Let's just get rid of this creature now. Yeah, we should have actually played the Blood Baron there. Or for next turn, set up for Blood Baron. Because I, I don't really want to be using a Wrecking Ball on their two drops anyway. But Oh, so we drew an untapped land for the Blood Baron anyway. Sometimes you just get both. Our opponent's got a quite a nice red-green deck, actually. 
their attack. It means they probably have a palm spell, but they choose not to do anything. That's good for us. So play the guild gate. One, two, three, four, five. We can't actually play the seeker, so we'll just play the key rune. And we're going to attack with the blood baron because it has a lifelink, so even if they attack us back, then it just doesn't matter because we're winning the race. And should have left it black actually for this, so then we can block with it. This deck has a lot of things going on, <laughs> and I'm not used to playing with any of these cards. So I apologize if I make a lot of misplays. But it's just uh, some Modo Sealed League, it's just for fun anyway. Alright, I guess we just play the huge worm, but we'll attack first. And we just pass the turn back. Judging by the fact that they don't have removal for our Viscopa, then they probably don't have removal for our Worm either. Oh, they're, they're actually playing black in their deck as well. Oh yeah, we knew about that for Pack Rat. Oh, I love this guy. <laughs> so he's uh, 7 mana for a 3-3 three, three with Bloodthirst 3, and then you can sacrifice it to deal damage. Uh, uh, sacrifice it to deal its power to target creature or player. Basically just a 3-3 three, three, though. So we'll attack with our, uh, do we attack with, probably just attack with both, right? We probably could have attacked with the 3-3 three, three as well here. Or is it a 2-2? Two, two? It's a 2-2 two, two, but it's got death touch. Yeah, probably should have attacked with that as well. So if we attack with both, they're going to double block here. Seems fine anyway, because then we're getting a huge amount of damage. Then we should attack with both. This is normally a 6 6 because it has Bloodthirst 3, but because they can't attack us, then it's just really struggling for them to do anything. And I believe that what's going to happen here is we're going to gain the 4 life. Oh no, okay, we're too short. If we were, if we went up to 30 and this deals that damage to them, I think this works the same as Death Shadow, whereas because we go up to 30, its toughness goes up as damage is still being, as damage is like still not checked by state based effects, so it would actually survive because it would become a 10 10, but unfortunately we're 2 life short. Yeah, it would have been significantly better if we just attacked with the 3-3 there, but can't be helped now. Okay, we're just going to play that straight away just because we could draw something good from it. Not bad. Untap the forest and then we can use the 3 3 to attack instead. So they're going to have to block the 7 6 here, I think, unless they have something. And then we just play this guy out. We could choose not to and just play around a board wipe, but um, I think it's better just to play everything out here. This, I don't think we can, oh, I guess we could play around a board wipe, anyway, so yeah, maybe it was right to play around a board wipe there. Yeah, 
And okay, so we got that one. Looks like our opponent flooded out there. And luckily for us, they didn't draw a pack rat. So we're seeing a couple of mana rocks from our opponent, but I don't think we want to bring in Shattering Spree. I don't really want to one for one their artifacts when I could just be ramping or playing our fatties instead. So, what do we want to cut? I think actually we want to keep what we had. Alright, we'll just run this back. Our opponent is on the play this time though. So this hand has no ramp because we can't cast this. We don't have, yeah, it's just this hand just doesn't do enough, I don't think. Oh, this hand actually does nothing because we've got only one land and it's a bounce land. I guess we could keep and hope to draw a land because we have so much ramp. Alright, I'm going to keep and try and get a land because I think that if we draw a land fairly soon we can ramp and to catch back up. And the spells we've got are pretty good and I don't really want to go down to 5. Especially with how low our land count is in our deck. This is the problem where you run too many mana rocks and not enough land I guess, but... They're going to start off again with their Terrarian. So the reason this land doesn't work is because when it enters the battlefield, it just returns to it, it just returns itself. I'll show you guys why. And then you have to choose a land, so it just, <laughs> it just chooses itself. I think the outside of like if we just draw a land, then we can go land next turn, play this next turn. We have another land because that one gets bounced, like. This hand's really easy to recover if we do draw a land. There we go. As long as we can survive the other game, we should be fine. Hopefully our opponent doesn't just slam a pack rat. Okay, just a signet, that's fine. I'm surprised our opponent played out a 2 1. It was probably just because we missed our land drop, but. So next time we can play a signet and play a tap land, and then. Oh, we have to discard a card, that's not good. So, what do we not need? Obviously we need the land. We probably want to keep all of our spells. We've got lots of blue mana. We've got black. I think it's just going to be the signet. Yeah, we'll get rid of the Simic signet. Yeah, like if they had kept the tr Tin Street for when we actually play Signet, this card would have been so much stronger. I guess they wanted to just kill us as quickly as possible. What on earth is that? That is a 4 mana 3 3, but it's. Uh, isn't that the one that's every color or something strange? Yeah, this is like a 4 mana 3 3, but it's. it's you don't have to pay any mana for it, but it's actually every color. I think that is it's a very strange card. Alright, so let's go Signet and Tap Land. That's why these dual lands are so these bounce lands are so powerful because we've got three mana out of two lands, which is just very, very strong. How have they given us a 1-1 Oh, they've grafted onto it, okay. 
So graft is creatures come in with that many counters, but you can move them when other creatures come into play. One, two, three, four. We can play out the hover barrier, or we can kill a creature. I don't mind just playing the hover, ba hover barrier though. Because then we're going to take 2, 3, 4, 5, down to 6. One, two, three, four. So if we played this, then we no, it just doesn't do much. I think we're going to flames this turn because the next turn, if we draw an untapped land, we can go one, two, three, four, five, down to two, tap this up to three, and then hover barrier. So I think that's what we're going to have to do. Or we could go one, two, three, play this. Then next turn we have one, two, three, four, five, untapped land. Oh, then we can play blood baron. But do we just? No, I, th I think we do have to just try and get for Blood Baron. And we'll play the key room for a blocker if we need to do that. We're going to take 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 this turn. Next turn, we'll be on 3, but we'll gain 4 up to 7. So we'll block here and take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if our opponent doesn't develop the board, then we can survive. Oh well, they actually didn't. Okay, so um, hopefully the blood baron is just going to keep us alive because if we block here. Uh, this creature can't actually deal damage to Blood Baron because I'm pretty sure it's every colour. It's Trans Guild Courier. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that is every colour. It just doesn't say it. I don't know why. So we block here, take two, three, four, five, but we gain the lifelink at the same time, so we only actually take one. Because it all happens at the same time. Well, that's not good for us. But luckily we have Wrecking Ball, so... Wrecking Ball this, then... One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six mana, we can Wrecking Ball, but then we can't do anything else. Or we can play the Clue Stone and then Wrecking Ball. Which sounds significantly better. So we need red. So we'll start with this one, into this one. Red and black. Let's get rid of this guy. And we just have to pass. We can attack, but then they attack us back for five, so we go down to one life less. Whereas this way we can block, kill one of their guys and gain the life, so it's much safer to just block. Alright, they're attacking with everything. So we're going to block the one that can't be regenerated. Any pump spell here wins the game, I think. We'll go up to 6 actually, so... Wait, why is this 4? What on earth? Oh, they cost brute strength. Okay, sure. They get, sorry, just went really quick, so I didn't know what happened. Oh, and okay, sure. All right, fair enough. They just um, pumped up that guy. So we went to exactly zero. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next round. Peace.